Is this guy replaced? In this video, I'm going to show you my workflow from Photoshop into Luminar 4. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm just going to show you my Luminar 4 workflow editing a landscape. At the end of the video, I've put up three images. And I want to see if you can tell me what one has the sky replaced, because this seems to be a big thing on forums and in communities at the moment that it's wrong to replace skies and you shouldn't be doing this and everyone has their opinion but it's your art you create what you want to do one of these skies has a sky replacement i'd love you to tell me in the comments below what one it is and that's not to test you to see if you can tell but it's just to see if you can appreciate what's going on to create it now, it could be the image I'm editing, as I'll say during the video, but it could be the second or the third one. You have to tell me. So without further ado, let's dive right in and show you this edit. Okay, that's us in Luminar 4 now, and what I'm going to do with this bare bones edit is show you start to finish the process that I use when I'm editing some of my landscapes. In this, t in this case, this one is a sunset shot just at the Buchel Et of Moor here and Etif Beg, and you can see the sun's just setting behind the mountain range here. So I'm going to edit this image straight through from start to finish to let you see a process. First thing I always do is go into the sky enhancer because I like my dramatic sky. So I'm going to push that as far as I possibly can without disturbing the image. I'm then going to get into the AI accent and I'm quite happy with that so far, looking around the image, yep. The next thing, AI structure. And I'll bring that up. Again, the AI enhanced and AI structure, these are global edits, so they affect the entire image. So remember when you are editing to look at the entire image unless you know you're only looking for a certain area and you're going to mask out that area or mask in that area. Next thing, colour. With my blues as usual, I am going to draw them back with this one, but I don't know how much because I like the colours with the sunset and the sky. So we'll just take this back. I'll get a bit more drama there. Yep, quite happy with that as well. I'm going to try the oranges. So if I push the orange a bit, if I take it too far, you can see what happens there. But it's also casting a nice light over the landscape. But that's just a wee bit too far for me. So I'll just push it with the luminance. From here, looking at how the image is sitting just now, I'm going to go into light. And I'm going to pull back the highlights just to see what happens. It's beginning to balance it out a bit more for me. Yep. And you can see there by the histogram what's going on. Next thing, I'll go into the smart contrast. And again, quite happy with that so far. There's nothing too much happening there. Details enhancer. I'm going to push the small details. There's a lot of information down here. As you can see, there's an awful lot of information down here. So I'm going to push the small details with this, but not too much. I'll just take that, see there, and yet again quite happy with that. Medium details, possibly about there, just to see what's going on in the background here. Yep, still maintaining everything. So right now, even although I've only been editing for a few minutes, there's the before image, there's the image we brought in from the camera. And that's how much it's changed already. Look at the light down here, it's what I was trying to capture at the time. So there's the before and the after, before and after. And I always do that twice, I don't know why I do that twice. But it just lets you check everything that's there. Right, landscape enhancer. 
I'm going to dehaze this, but knowing that the dehaze again affects the entire image, it's a global edit. So I'll watch what's going on when I'm doing this. And you notice it brought out some more texture in the sky. If I flick it on and off, you'll see the difference there. Mainly around this area here, you're seeing a high percentage of difference. So that's quite good for this. So there it is off, there it's on, and I'll zoom back out. Again, so far quite happy. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Golden hour, for me, I don't know if it'll work with this image, but I'm going to try it anyway. Why not? They're there to be tried. They're not there to go, no, you can't use this or you can use this. Let's see what it does, and I'm hoping it warms up my image. But not too much. As you can see in here, I like subtlety in my, in my images. I like my dramatic skies, but I also like subtle light within my images as well. It's a contradiction, so... Yep, everything looking okay so far. I'll flick it on and off. That's where we started. That's where we are now. And at that, I may actually pull back some of the oranges. I quite like everything else that's going on here. So I'm going to turn that down, go into creative. Is there anything I want to put in here? No, I don't want to add a sun ray to this because the sun's there. I could add a sun ray from, I'm going to play sun center just to show you. I could put a sun ray in there and I could peak it slightly like that. I'll just go into one. But for me, that's that's just way too much. But that's my choice. So I'm going to reset that. That's my choice with this. So there's nothing in here. I'm not going to replace the sky in this one. But as I said, there are three images at the end. One of them being this one. I'd like you to tell me what one had the sky replaced. This one could have been it. Because I could have dropped a sky in. Replaced the sky. Stamped a layer. Saved the image back out and then brought the image back in with the layer already stamped so that when I go into this here, you can't tell if there's a sky being replaced. So watch out for that. You tell me at the end what one's been replaced. I'm going to get into the portrait tools and I'm going to add the Orton effect. I really like the Orton effect in these images. So I'm going to pull that in slightly. You flick it on and off just to see if it's too much. Nope, that's actually okay at that. I'll maybe push it even a wee bit further to be honest. Take that off. That's just a lovely change for me. That I will also keep. Right, within the Pro, am I going to use the advanced contrast? That's the good thing about these filters. The filters are there to try them. If you don't like it once you do it, you either delete what you've just done, reset it. For example, if I go into reset, I'm just going to push the highlights here and I'll push the balance. So let's see that. So you can see the massive change that's having. If I don't like it, reset it. It's as simple as that with the software. Color enhancer. I take the brilliance down. It takes it near enough back to the original image. I don't like it. Reset it. This is where I'm sitting just now and it's quite happy and I'm not going to cycle through all the tools just to let you see what I'm happy with and what I'm unhappy with because you do have a workflow that you tend to stick to that you know works for your images. In here, am I going to add a vignette? Not at the moment, but I'm going to try the dodge and burn. I want to lift some light within this. I'm going to start painting using the dodge and burn and it's the lighting, the strength, I'm going to take it right down to around 10 because I want this to be subtle. Take the brush size down, move that, take the brush size down and I'm just going to lighten that. Take it down there, you can see the difference now. You should have seen that updating there. I'll maybe paint a bit in there. In there. And what I'm looking to do is just pick out small areas within this 
that will catch your eye and it will draw you through the image. That actually might have been too much there now that I'm looking at it. Lighten the cottage and lighten there and it is subtle. I don't want to change the light in the image too much. I'm going to paint down the slopes here. That may have been too much. See, this is the good thing about this. So the overall amount, I can actually drag it back as well. You saw that change there. So that, for me at the moment, there's a couple of areas over here. I'm just going to pick out. And I've been quite liberal now with this. I'm not going to get into too much detail with this. Paint that there, a bit there. I don't want to add light to where there is no light affecting the image because that then just looks a bit too much. This I am lighting, lightening just now, so it may work, it may not work. The fact that I'm doing it, it now may draw your eyes to that area. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to turn off the start painting and I'm going to show you the before, where we started, to the after, before, after, before and after. So you can see the difference that that's made, I told you i do that twice, so you can see the difference that that's, that has made. I like my vignettes, I'm going to try a vignette on this, if I don't like it I will just reset it. So I am going to go back into light, vignette, and I'm going to pull it in. The reason I put the vignette in for this, if, I don't know if you notice, if, if you look down here, you will see that the foreground is quite light, and the vignette, I could paint it out in the sky if I want, be using the edit mask, and I could contain the vignette just to this area, but I'll turn this off to let you see. Right, so you're watching this area down here. Turn it back on. You see it affecting the sky as well? It actually works for the sky, so I am going to leave that. So you know that that vignette didn't happen in the scene, but that's it. So that is my image. I'm quite happy with that. I'll show you the before, the after, and a relatively short amount of time. Click apply. So hopefully that let you see my editing workflow when I'm in Luminar 4. I know these videos are put up sometimes, it's just a small piece at a time, or I talk to the camera too much, or whatever. But I just wanted to show you when I'm working with an image, how I get to a point, in this case with this image, uh, where I went, yep, that's me, I'm quite happy with that, so I step back away from it. The next few images I'm going to put up, as I said at the beginning, one has a sky replacement. And I would like you to tell me what one it is. Uh, as I've said, there is a lot of arguments and comments and negativity around replacing a sky. But sometimes people don't have the opportunity when they're at a location to wait for a good sky. As long as they don't claim the image is theirs, as in, that was captured one frame, single shot. There's nothing wrong with that. This software is here to be enjoyed. It's like Photoshop, when someone creates a montage or someone creates an image edit that is fantastical. People don't go, that's not right. You didn't take those images. How did you get a dragon in that hill? That kind of thing doesn't happen. So. I'm not saying to MD, leave people alone. You have your opinion, you have your voice. But sometimes negativity can put people off things. And I'm not one for being negative when it comes to creation and when people are creating something. Everyone has their boundaries. That is fine. I have mine, there's certain things I won't do in images, there's certain things I will do in images because I enjoy my image editing as well. But I won't go in and tell people that they're wrong because they replaced the sky. 
and this will all fade away very very soon because it's a new thing it's a new thing with the software and this will fade away very very soon have your opinion but don't beat down on someone because they've tried something you are a sad strange little man you have my pity farewell it's a shame to a point that we're like that as creatives and there's nothing we can really do about it at all. It just really is a shame. Have your boundaries. Why not have your boundaries? What you will do with an image and what you won't. But when it comes to it, you do not have to beat down on someone because they have a different opinion than you. I've got my soapbox here right now with this YouTube channel. But I'm not even going to do it because I'm more interested in showing you edits. So that's me, I'm stepping off the soapbox when it comes to that. Right, for the fun part, let's have a look at the three images. Image one, image two, and image three. And then I'll bring them up big. Have a go at me in the comments if you want, because I had my opinion. I don't mind if it's negative, I never answer negatives. Uh, if it's a discussion or a debate, I will but I never answer negative comments because I'm not a negative person. So, have a look at these three images. I would love you to tell me what one has the sky replaced, remembering that I shoot my own skies. So, have a look, put your comments below. Hopefully I'm not gonna get slaughtered for saying what I've just said, but put your comments below. Pick image one, two or three. You saw me edit image one. See if you can get it right. See if you can tell me what one was there. And as soon as you get it, I'll let you know. If you've enjoyed the video, big thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos in the channel, please check them out below. If you're a, currently not a subscriber, but would like to think about subscribing, hit the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching.